Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Citizens' Assembly. I would now like to call on the Chair of the Assembly, Ms Justice Lefoy, to begin our public session and deliver her opening address. Well, more eve, a gorge, a gospodge roiv, a margin, who can cade the crinu, then chinol sironok. It's me and Lamforcia, or le a car rev, um, a nochani ball, eh, then chinol. Um, those of you who are here, were here earlier, eh, to USA again, eh, good morning. Um, and to those who weren't here earlier, I say good morning. Um, and to everyone I say welcome to the first meeting of the Citizens' Assembly. A particular welcome to my 99 fellow members who have travelled from all corners of the country to be here today. At what is fast becoming the busiest time of the year as we approach the festive season, I'm very grateful that you've chosen to attend what is the beginning of a very important exercise. You have come from all across the country to be here, giving your free, free time freely in the service of the state. And I hope you will take some um, fulfillment and satisfaction in this expression of civic duty. And I genuinely mean that. I also wish to extend a special welcome to those of you who are tuning in online. Falcha, Arish, um, all of the Assembly's public proceedings will be streamed um, on our website and uh, the proceedings are being streamed on three separate channels in English, Oscarilga and with Irish Sign Language. Um, I, would take, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the management and the staff of this venue, uh, the Grand Hotel in Malahide, which will be our base for the duration of the Assembly's lifespan. I know that Matt Ryan and, and his team have done a great job in preparing the facilities uh, to meet our needs. As you can see, um, we have all been made feel very welcome here, and I'm sure the members echo my sentiments on that. Um, we are all here this morning because the Houses of the Oireachtas passed a resolution approving the establishment of the Assembly to consider five discrete topics. The Eighth Amendment of the Constitution, how we best respond to challenges and opportunities of an ageing population, fixed-term parliaments, the manner in which referenda are held, and how the state can make Ireland a leader in tackling climate change. Um, under the resolution, that's the resolution of the Oireachtas, the Assembly will first consider, make recommendations and report to the Houses of the Oireachtas on the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution, and at the risk of wearying you, I just want to emphasise once again, our report goes to the Houses of the Oireachtas, not to the government. The Assembly will then consider, make recommendations and report on each remaining matter as soon as it has completed its de deliberations on each matter. And as you know, we have a, a year in which to complete our task. Um, well, in relation to today's work, today we begin considering arguably the most difficult topic, uh, the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution. I have reflected on the uh, arguably, and I think it would be more, it would have been more correct to say definitely. It is definitely the most difficult topic we have to uh, address. In 1983, the Eighth Amendment introduced Article 40, Section 3, Subsection 3, into the Constitution, which acknowledged the right to life of the unborn with due regard to the equal right to the life of the mother. Um, one of the most fundamental aspects of the amendment is that it was introduced by the people in a referendum, um, which, as I'm sure you all know, is the only way in which the Constitution, von Rockneheren, can be changed. The Constitution is the foundation of our legal system. Under the Constitution, the people are sovereign, the people are the ultimate decision makers in terms of what provisions are inserted into or removed from the Constitution or what changes are made to it. Um, it is important that the Eighth Amendment is examined within the wider, wider constitutional framework in which it is situated. In this regard, the separation of powers between the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary must inform our discussions and ultimately our recommendations. 
Now, I want to say something about approaching uh, our work, uh, in particular this weekend, and how we ha have decided to approach it. Um, the Eighth Amendment has been the source of much controversy since its enactment. It is a complex, contentious issue which requires reasoned, sensible and compassionate approach. There are many, many aspects to this topic which will require our attention over the coming months. In structuring the programme for this weekend, however, I felt it was very important that our considerations are grounded in the current state of the law on the Eighth Amendment and the factual situation which exists on the ground in Ireland uh, today concerning termination of pregnancy. And I want to emphasise that at this point, and what I'm emphasising is at this point, we will not uh, be hearing any comments or observations on or criticisms of the current regime perceived advantages and disadvantages of the law as it stands and any potential changes to it will be presented in subsequent weekends when we consider the topic. Um, the objective today is to give the members an overview, as I've said, um, of the law and uh, the application of the law in the medical sphere. This morning we will hear from Dr Owen Carolyn um, about the current law, um, uh, and you see the, the, the title of his um, address um, in, in, in your papers. Professor Carolyn will explain how the law has evolved uh, from before 1983 up to and including the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act 2013, which from here on in I'm just going to call the Act of 2013. Um, this afternoon we will have two sessions on current practice in Ireland. First, we will hear how the legal position is reflected in the medical sphere on a day-to-day -day basis, including how the Act of 2013 operates in practice. Professor John Higgins from Cork University Maternity Hospital and Professor Anthony McCarthy from the National Maternity Hos Hospital, Hollis Street, Dublin, will provide us with these insights from the medical profession's perspective. Secondly, Janice, Do Janice Donlan from the HSE Crisis Pregnancy Programme will provide us with information as to what happens on the ground. The existing constitutional rights to information and travel will be looked at. We will also uh, be given some st statistics around the numbers and demographics of uh, women seeking terminations. Finally, um, Dr. Brendan O'Shea from the Irish College of General Practitioners will give us insights into the experiences of members of the Irish College of General Practitioners supporting women with crisis pregnancy, pregnancy in Ireland in the context of the Eighth Amendment. Now, to complement our consideration of the current legal position and how it applies in practice, um, I felt it was appropriate to consider why ethics is important in the discussion of this topic. Tomorrow morning, we will be given an introduction to ethics by Dr. Mark Sheehan uh, from Oxford University. The information to be provided by Dr. Sheehan will allow the assembly members to develop a way of thinking about complex, complex issues which have distinct moral implications. I would like to take this opportunity to thank each of the speakers who has agreed to present this weekend and share his or her knowledge and expertise. Some have travelled long distances to be with us and I'm most grateful to them. I would also like to thank the expert advisory group established pursuant to um, the resolution of both houses of the Oireachtas to assist the work of the Assembly in terms of preparing information and advice for the, and the expert, this is my, uh, uh, choice of adjective for the invaluable help uh, given by them to me and to the Secretariat over the past two months. Um, the, the, the help has been invaluable. Um, now, um, just a few words about deliberative democracy, because that is what this process is intended to be. All the present presentations um, which we will hear 
will be supplemented with private roundtable discussions, which will provide the opportunity to reflect and discuss what we have heard. Deliberation is a cornerstone of this exercise, and we endeavour to ensure adequate time for this to occur across the weekend. Each roundtable discussion will be followed by a question and answer session. You, the members, will be assisted during the roundtable discussions and question and answer sessions by facilitators um, who will be accompanied by note takers. I would like to welcome them to this first meeting of the Assembly. Um, we, are joined, we are also joined, uh, by, joined today by Professor David Farrell um, uh, from UCD, who is going um, to be supervising a research element um, to the proceedings over the coming year in how uh, deliberative uh, the process is. And he's accompanied by Jane Souter, um, whom I didn't know until this morning would be here, and I welcome both of them. Um, Um, finally, uh, tomorrow you will, you and I'm talking to the members, you will deliberate on what issues you wish to discuss as part of your consideration of the Eighth Amendment. And this will form the basis of our work programme for, for the coming meetings. And obviously that is a very uh, important aspect, aspect of what we will be doing this weekend. I've already given this a considerable thought and have reflected on it with the assistance of the expert advisory group and the secretariat. Um, it is, however, important that the members themselves can input into the work programme. That engagement will be ongoing. We will need to continue to engage with you to make sure that you are being presented with all of the information you need to make um, an informed recommendation to the Oireachtas. Um, I just want to say a few brief words about submissions. Um, we are actively seeking submissions from representative groups, citizens' organisations, other um, interest bodies and members of the public on the topic, the Eighth Amendment. Um, there has been a high level of interest in the submissions process um, and to date the Assembly Secretariat has received almost 600 submissions from groups and individuals at home and abroad. Um, submiss submissions can be made online or by post to the Secretariat's office, um, which is in Parnell Square in Dublin. Uh, the submissions are integral to the work of the Assembly, and I would encourage people to have their voices heard, in particular the diaspora and young people under 18 years of age who are not directly represented in the Assembly membership. Um, and again, I think this is important to emphasise at this stage, the submissions will form the basis of the selection of advo advocacy and other organisations which, which will make presentations in, in future weekend sessions in accordance with our rules and procedures. Now, I just want to say briefly about supporting documentation. All of the papers presented this weekend will be posted on the Assembly's website. I'm conscious of the risk of over, overburdening the members with too much detail this week, um, but I, th th there are three other documents uh, going up on the website and they have been furnished to the members. Um, the first is an outline of the provisions of the Constitution under the heading Fundamental Rights, which I may re refer to later. Uh, then there is a chronology of what has happened um, um, in the legal scenario uh, since 1983, sorry, since 1983, um, and how the current state of the law has evolved. Um, this, it, it, it's an outline chronology. It outlines the various matters which have occurred since 1983. For example, decisions of the courts, referenda, reports of committees and expert groups, and the enactment of legislation. And the objective is to give you, the members, uh, the information of what has happened, just in outline. And then um, finally, and most importantly, uh, there is a, a third paper, uh, which, is, which you will have, uh, which was prepared by the expert advisory group entitled Current Law on, on Article 40, uh, Section 3, Section 3. Um, and um, I think this is going to be a very, very useful document. 
um, and again I may refer to this later. Um, uh, I've said a lot, have I outstayed my welcome? Um, in conclusion, um, it is evident that this, weekend, that this weekend there is very much to do, to hear, to learn, to consider. Um, and, and again, this is a, a genuine observation. I'm heartened by the energy and collegial spirit in the room this morning. Um, we'll, we will now begin proceedings, and it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Owen Carolyn from UCD, who is also a practicing barrister and very familiar with what he's going to talk about, um, to give the Assembly's first presentation. It's on Article 40, Section 3, Subsection 3, and the Law on Abortion, a History. Thank you.